Hello, free leaguers. Welcome to the special uh, session that we've got with Graham Davis and Nils from uh, Free League. And uh, our, everything that we're going to be talking about today is about the Basin Mythic Britain in Ireland uh, Kickstarter that is currently on that is currently running. Uh, I'm going to remind folks that if you're interested in anything that we are talking about, go back to Kickstarter right now. The link is in the description below. Uh, it is well over almost it's well over double what the original Kickstarter was just a couple great books for, uh, for the vase in line. And now uh, we've got a whole bunch of stretch goals that have been unlocked and even a solo mode that is going to be possible here. Uh, if that gets unlocked a, a little later on, so go check it out. Uh, but yeah, that's all I'm going to say right now for, for that. Uh, we'll bring on our guests, uh, in this uh, session. Of course, joining me is the one and only Anna Westerling from Free League Publishing, our US and our, our, our events manager. Anna, thank you for coming on. Thank and you. And being my co host for this session. Graham and Nils, thank you so much. I can't, uh, this is such a huge honor to, to have, have you both on. And Graham, uh, you, uh, you've shaped a lot of our RPG, I guess, history. Like, our, our lives, you know, over the years. So this is a great, huge honor for, for us you. here uh, here on the show. So thank you for joining us and, and being a part of this session. And Nils, thank you for, for joining us and doing all the hard work that you do at Freely Publishing. And, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm excited. Congratulations on on the uh, the success of the Kickstarter. And uh, mm -hmm. it's just blown, blown away. Uh, has it, I'm going to assume it's blown away all the ex expectations that you probably had going into the Kickstarter. Uh, oh, yes. I yes. mean, it's... Uh, Really, really taken off. So, uh, By congratulations almost, uh, on that. Double the amount or something like that. Awesome, awesome. That's that's great. Um, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the Kickstarter, Graham. Why don't you tell folks how you got involved with this uh, with this Kickstarter and uh, how how uh, you you uh, how this how this book came to be? Well, <clears throat> I've been a folklore geek uh, ever since I first started playing D D and i started ransacking the mythology and folklore section of my local library for new things to throw at my players um it actually goes back further than that because uh i've always been monsters have always been the uh the thing for me in uh, in fantasy games and you can blame ray harryhausen for that and the skeletons in jason and the argonauts but um so when i saw vesson and i saw that magnificent cover art i would defy anyone to to look at that cover and not open the book i i thought immediately this is something i have to be involved with i have to write a, a britain and ireland source book for this game because uh, there's all that folklore there this game just treats the scandinavian folklore so nicely and uh, it just has to happen so i i tried to sort of tamp down my enthusiasm a little and and, and not beg when i contacted free league <laughs> <laughs> but uh i uh got talking to to nilson thomas and then uh after that to johan and um uh, yeah we all agreed that the book would be a good idea and uh, it looks like the kickstarter backers agree I, I would i would assume so yes i would i would uh, say yes that's definitely the case so this has been in the works for for quite some time uh from the sounds then this is something you've been working on for Niels. Niels, uh, how long has this been planned well i think <clears throat> graham delivered the first draft uh, this spring uh, wow I think that's right yeah yep. so it's uh and there's been some back and forth and it's been developing stuff and and we've been mm -hmm. play testing scenarios and so on so it's been uh it's been been worked on uh, uh a lot by graham before that as well of course Mm -hmm. uh, then we've had uh, other people. We've done maps. Um, I mean, uh, the fantastic map by Francesca Bayeral took some. I mean, that took maybe two months to do. Uh, so there's been lots of stuff going on for I would say a year or so. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. And and that's one thing we should probably point out to to, to folks that are considering backing or have backed uh, this this Kickstarter is that the alpha of this game, of this book is. Pretty much ready to go to you're going to send it out to backers right before christmas so that they can start playing it and try kind of testing it out you know even before uh uh you know uh, the, the end of the year 
Yeah, that's right. I've uh, spent the last week or so dealing with uh, with comments from the latest round of playtesting, and so I'm hopeful they'll make it into the alpha. And uh, yeah, it's it's a real book, folks. It's it's there. It's not one of these Kickstarter horror stories where you pay your money and have to to wait five years. Yeah, that's that's always nice. It was uh, it was. I just actually got back from PAX Unplugged and. Uh, the amount of folks that were just really, really excited about Vason and this new Kickstarter was was amazing, and and so there's definitely this huge, huge community that just loves everything that uh, we put out for for Vason, which is really, really awesome to see. Um, Anna, did you have any questions that, that yeah, you? Yeah, like I wanted to, pose? to know what happened in Nils when when the email was sent. What happened in in the free league end? Were you like? Well, was it like happy? Had you planned before doing things like that, or was yeah, it like? Oh. Yeah, we hadn't planned. Uh, I, mean, I would say actually that the book comes uh, that it's actually uh, is happening is mostly thanks to Graham for for uh, <laughs> for uh, emailing us with this suggestion, and uh, it took a while also for for me to understand uh, uh, exactly who you were, <laughs> because we, we get a lot of emails from from freelancers. And, sure, uh, I bet you do. Uh, I have read and played the enemy within, so it was kind of when we realized that it was you and your connections to a mythology, and when we thought about it, um, also we talked to Joanne, um, and one of the actual inspirations for for the Vasen game, the original, uh, was actually uh, you know uh, British Gothic stories, um, right? Uh, also, uh, you know Sherlock Holmes stories as well, the Bram Stoker, yeah. everything like that. So it just felt natural to kind of go to the main source of inspiration for the second book. So yeah. yes, to mention Johan, that's Johan Eriksson's our awesome illustrator. Yes, I that's mean he's right. kind of Mr. Vasen in the sense that he has created this, the images first uh, and the art books, and then we created the game after mm. that. Yeah. And and he's perfect for the uh, the period and the subject matter. I mean, he fits right in alongside Arthur Rackham and and Brian Froud and those great illustrators of folklore. So, but did did the, were all images done, or have you one created new images? Could you be like, we, uh, I want an image of this and that, and then we want yeah. this, and then he. Can my, you draw one? My initial proposal contained, I think, it was twenty creatures. And uh, Niels came back and said, we can't afford to do that many. <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> Johan and I worked together to, to whittle the list down. And uh, we got it to uh, a number. Of, and we picked the ones that, uh, you know, he would found, find interesting to draw and I would find most interesting to, to write up. And uh, I think there are... I think there are ten now in the uh, in the source book. I think that's the right number, uh, with some more coming as stretch goals. Yeah. So and and uh, he hasn't actually done all those. So the stretch goals, he's doing them right now. So, mm -hmm. so uh, there's some uh, that he's working on right now. I get sketches almost daily from you. On. Yeah, I, I think it was only about two days ago that uh, we were discussing what the uh, what one particular monster would be. Have it been fun working together, the three of you? It sounds like you are oh, like absolutely. three folklore <laughs> geeks who kind of got to geek around in something you really like. I, I think that's probably true. Um, certainly, as far as, as Johan is concerned, I've mentioned a number of very obscure creatures from different corners of, of Britain and Ireland, and he's not once come back to me and said, now, what is that? He's, he just knows. Wow. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the geek is strong in this one. <laughs> so, but what can you expect when you play the game? Um... Well, from, from the source book, um, I've done a, a treatment of, uh, of Britain and Ireland, uh, very much in the style of the Mythic North chapter from the core book. Um, so, uh, you know, general overview, uh, some of the conflicts and tensions, including you know, tensions uh, in Ireland, which were uh, starting to boil up at that time, even though Ireland was still under British rule then, and uh, the cultural and national differences between the, the four nations that made up the United Kingdom. And uh, then I've gone on to, uh, well, as I've said, I think it's uh, 10 monsters. There are three mysteries in there. And... Uh, Basically, that and the core rule book uh, can keep you playing for, for some time. 
uh, each monster is treated in the same way as it is in the core rule book. So you have some adventure seeds there. And uh, yeah, um, it's pretty much, well, it's everything I would expect from a British Isles source book. I tried to make sure I didn't miss anything out. Very good. Should let's, we do some questions? Yeah, from let's, the do audience? Some, let's do some. There, the chat is just is super super lively. Let's let's get to uh, let's do get to some of the uh, questions yeah. that are in the chat. Some... Uh, mm, good. Yeah, Al Alistair McGuffin asks, "Hello, free leaguers. Maybe not hundred percent on topic, but will the meta story from the Dance of Dreams be continued?" I can take that one. Sure. Uh, yes, uh, it will be. Uh, it's um, we're actually. Uh, I'm not sure how much I should spill the beans, but. Uh, I think we're known for spilling too many beans on this show. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, we actually have a campaign book uh, that is continuing that story, um, mm -hmm. but we need to do a, quite a lot of more work on it, and we, we're not sure exactly when it will be published. But yes, it will be continued, and it will be continued in a quite spectacular fashion, I would say. So. Excellent. Excellent. Look forward to that. Yes. Tony L asks, uh, what were the key challenges with bringing base into, into a new environment? Are there other similar expansions on the table? Well, I can take the first part. Sure. Um, and the, the key challenges were surprisingly few. Um, I think partly for historical and cultural reasons. You know, we have this uh, northern and western European cultural milieu where there's a lot of um, a lot of shared uh, themes and tropes in uh, folklore and fairy law. Uh, in fact, in the in the source book, I do include a section on um, British versions of uh, this and from the core rule book, because there's a lot of crossover and correspondence, which is not really surprising because large parts of, uh, of Britain and Ireland were under Danish or Norwegian rule for several centuries. And that's found its way into the folklore. Um, so, honestly, the, the key challenge is, from my point of view, and this is going to sound flippant, uh, the key challenge is was deciding what not to include. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, the book would be enormous. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and Graham, what about uh, the other question? Are, are similar expansions on the table? I think that's one for Nils. Oh, for Nils? Nils, yeah, Nils. what about you? One. Uh, sure. Yes, a definite yes on that one, uh, but uh, we haven't 100% decided exactly where we should go after this. We have some ideas. Uh, we have some quite strong leads, um, so we'll we'll see. Uh, but yes, we will continue exploring. Maybe, yeah. the Maybe the chat can give us suggestions. Yes, can that see. would be great. <laughs> Uh, Wendy asks, uh, hi, Graham. I have a question about the future of the Mythic Britain and Ireland line. Is there any chance we will get a standalone mystery book, especially, specifically, especially for the setting? Um, again, that's kind <laughs> of a, a decision for Free League to make. But uh, if it does come up, I would be delighted to write it. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's I should say we haven't planned it for now, but uh, I mean, it's obviously a, a astounding success, this Kickstarter. So who knows what can happen? We'll, uh, if enough people ask for sure. it, we might consider it. So, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I outlined, I think, I, five or maybe six mysteries. So I, I have, I'm not short of ideas. <laughs> there were just uh, only three would fit in the book. Uh, let's see here. Mike C asks Hello from Atlantic Canada. You seem to be drawing from the same knowledge pool in Warhammer fantasy role playing and Vason, would you discuss the differences between the two, the different mentality or goals you approach? That's uh, that's a really interesting question. I, I guess the similarities probably are mainly because they come from, you know, the same mind uh, mm -hmm. here, but um, yeah, I've always been uh, a fan of um, low power investigative uh, role playing over uh you know, minimaxing and dungeon bashing. Um, largely, I think, because, uh, you know, dungeon bashing just reduces uh, a creature from mythology or folklore uh, to just a, a set of stats to be overcome. And uh, it never does the, the creature full justice, whereas uh, particularly folklore and folk horror sort of scenarios, um, you have to, in order to be true to the folklore, you have to be true to the creature, um, because otherwise, why bother? And uh, so to that extent, both are, 
you know, fairly low powered investigative sort of things. And uh, I've forgotten the rest of the question. Could you flash it up again? Sure. There we are. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the uh, difference is, yeah, obviously, um, Vesson is based on something from the real world. Uh, Warhammer is to a, a, a small extent, but it's it's mostly a fantasy world, and it has its own mythology, which is completely made up. And um, and although it occasionally borrows from other myth, from world mythology or from uh, other fantasy worlds, um, and that would be the the main difference. The um, the the setting of Besson firmly in a, a magical fae analog of the real world. The the next question we got from it looks like Leolin asks, uh, can you tell us more about the new archetypes? Um, well, I can tell a little. Um, they're still kind of works in progress at the moment, but um, uh, obviously archetypes, uh, you know, when I'm as a, a role playing game writer, when I look at a game, I immediately start spotting um, things I can add new creatures, new spells, new abilities, new character classes, archetypes. Um, that's just the way my mind works, because I've always got one eye on what can I write for this game. And um, archetypes is uh, another of those things. I mean, like character classes in other games, there's almost endless possibility for addition. And uh, so as a stretch goal for the uh, the Kickstarter, we picked a few that I thought would be particularly effective in a British setting. Uh, not that they're restricted to a British setting, but that they reflect the sort of forms and tropes of, uh, of popular fiction about uh, 19th century England, like Nils mentioned, Sherlock Holmes and Jack the Ripper and all the, uh, the other fun and frivolity. So uh, I'm trying to remember, um, there's a, a socialite sort of character uh, archetype um, nice sort of what Call of Cthulhu called a dilettante in its early uh, versions. Um, uh, an athlete. Entertainer. And Pardon an me? Entertainer. Yep. entertainer, absolutely. Um, we had a, in Britain, you know, the West End theatre scene was uh, was booming in the, the late 19th century. That's where it really started up. Uh, and there was um, a thing called Music Hall, which was a sort of a, a variety show similar to American vaudeville. And um, entertainers feature, particularly theatre folk, feature in a, a lot of uh, stories of the time as being sort of slightly on the fringe of society, a little disreputable um, and uh, able to move between worlds uh, from you know, the, uh, the drawing rooms of the wealthy to the, uh, the shadier parts of town. Uh, so that could be a very useful character with some useful skills. Um, plus, there are athletes, um, you know, uh, cricket and rugby players in particular at that time were celebrities in Britain. There was one called W.G. Grace who uh, played cricket and was a, a sort of a national institution at the time, almost like Babe Ruth was in America 40 years later. And... Um, and there are uh, stories, for example, there's a very popular uh, series at the time of stories uh, featuring a character called A.J. Raffles, who was a, uh, a star cricketer by day and a, a gentleman burglar by night. Uh, so it all fits very nicely in with the, the setting and the tropes. I love it. Uh, let's see here. Patty asks a question that says, uh, 19th century, the Irish were not doing too well. Absentee landlords, evicting people from their homes, mass immigration and death because of the famine, to name a few. How will the book handle these topics? This is a very good question, and yeah. I'm very glad it was asked because it's something that we've considered pretty much from the outset of this book, even to uh, titling it Mythic Britain and Ireland rather than just Mythic Britain or the Mythic British Isles. Um, yeah, the... Speaking as an English person myself with a knowledge of history, there were some terrible things done in Ireland during the 19th century and indeed in the centuries before. And the struggle for, uh, for Irish freedom from oppression and eventual independence was uh, taking shape in the time that is uh, represented in the book. And um, we certainly acknowledge that and... Uh, you know, make sure that uh, 
we are aware of it. How is it handled? Um, Honestly, it would take a book much larger and possibly a book dedicated to Ireland alone to, to do the topic justice, but we've done the best we can. And um, in terms of the game itself, there's a lot of possibility in um, adding the unique creatures of, of Irish law uh, into the political struggle uh, and... Uh, reflecting you know having it happen on on both sides of the fey mundane divide um that would be quite an interesting way to to explore the uh, the history within the context of the game very good uh rpg time says uh, graham or boris johnson live at 5 p.m i guess they're, <laughs> they're they're trying to decide what they should tune in to that's an easy choice yeah well, that's a good yeah uh, he yeah. has <laughs> He has more hair than I do. <laughs> uh, Ricardo, has, no. What's, no, what, I'm yeah. just saying. Uh, Ricardo has a question. It says, "Hi everyone. Not really a question for Graham, but I guess, I guess. But will the stretch goals be part of the final printed product? I'm sadly not backing the campaign. I'll get it sooner or later. Ricardo, we totally appreciate that. Uh, that's fine. We we understand that this uh, you know the holiday season is upon us. So budgets could be a little tight. So uh, we appreciate uh, any support that's given to us. Uh, so." Uh, uh, and I'm sure that it will be a, a pledge manager uh, or a late backer option uh, after the Kickstarter is over uh, if yep. you decide that you, that you can uh, back later on. So, uh, but uh, Nils, uh, can you uh, answer that question for, uh, for uh, Yes. Uh, uh, the answer is uh, yes, mostly. Uh, but there are some instances where we won't be including them. That's, for example, the PDF, the digital stretch codes. Uh, there's uh, a, a extra mystery and there's a solo mode. And the reason why is because that would delay the book uh, by quite some time. Uh, I mean, it takes quite a lot of time to do these things. So it's much better for, we think, for, uh, for everyone to get those separately at a later date instead of just delaying it for, you know, for huge amounts of time. And also because that would kind of change the scope of the book, uh, which we, we actually try to shy away from changing too much of the original um, specification of the book in a Kickstarter because it's very easy to get carried away and add stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's fun, of course, but it could also uh, delay and even, um, uh, you know, cause huge problems for projects. So most stuff will be included. Uh, there's some others like a soundtrack, for example, that, of course, will be included, uh, but most of it will be, yeah. Gr Graham, are you composing the uh, the, the the soundtrack? <laughs> no. no, no. Okay. Uh, no, I, I'm afraid I uh, I was taken out of music classes in school uh, when my mother discovered that I could be doing extra mathematics. <laughs> but uh, about stretch goals, Nils, there's been rumor that you planned all the stretch goals, so now you've been like planning yeah. everything. Or has there been a tad of panic when you try to figure out new stretch goals? De definitely panic. It's funny because <laughs> uh, it seems like some, I've actually seen this on Discord, uh, some some people kind of assume that we kind of have everything mapped out for a Kickstarter and we kind of expect this to go as well every time. And that's absolutely not true. Um, we had, of course, some stretch goals ready, uh, but it we blew through those in 1.5 days. <laughs> and after that it was a scramble for new ones and so we started you know uh, talking to gray and we started talking to other people um, um and we asked for the solo mode the same day as we announced it for so it's uh, it's always kind of um, a much more of i wouldn't say panic but it's much more of new stuff getting uh, thought out on the go mm -hmm. um without trying to change the project too much yeah, I, I, it has to be a kind of a more organic process responding to the progress of the thing because I don't think anyone could have foreseen how how fast and how far this Kickstarter would go. No. Yeah. So are you still like if 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 it would go even more, which we're all hoping, of course, do you have like something in your back pockets to add on more stretch goals, or will there be like Christmas stretch goals panic and like yeah, what should we do? Should we do this or like? <laughs> Well, speaking to be honest, myself, I'm never anymore. short of ideas. Yeah. So there's always ideas, and there's always stuff we can do. But there's, there's also this kind of balance of of getting the book mm -hmm. out on time and so on. So there's often yeah. always stuff we can do, but we we're super um, careful not to overpromise and mm -hmm. kind of delay the project. 
Yeah, yeah, particularly since uh, you know delays are a problem with uh, with printing and so on. Just uh, times yeah. being what they are and shipping everything. Yep, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bill, who uh, I will say, he's the gentleman that that, uh, that demanded that we have Graham on the uh, YouTube uh, channel. So he's the one that enticed the, or that, that, that got the crowds going for the for, to make sure that this session happened. I feel like I'm obligated to ask this question because you know he he's the one that was demanding you on on our show. So uh, thank you, Bill, for for, uh, for yes, uh, thank you, Bill. Uh, question for Graham. Hello, Graham. Thanks for answering my other question on Discord about Annis. Question now, will the setup of the society be the same in the British Isles? Um, it's the same but different, uh, probably is the best way to put it. Um, I've created a, a new society um, using historical characters such as the magician John Dee and the antiquarian uh, William Stukeley from uh, British history. Um, but... Uh, this the British society has very close ties with its Scandinavian counterpart, and uh, they have a long shared history together. So, rather than being a, a separate society with a British accent, it's more like um, another strand in the rope of the the worldwide um, uh, societies for the uh, the study and uh, and dealing with Vesson. Excellent. Uh, Noble asks, do you cover the Welsh knot in the cultural differences? Not, not, not specifically. Uh, okay. I must admit that's, that's one that, uh, that slipped by me, but it's certainly, uh, something to think about. And, uh, I do plan, um, I hope I'm not out of place in saying this, but I do plan to do, uh, some stuff via the free league workshop on drive through. Nice. And uh, that might be a very good place for that. Uh, GM, uh, JM asks, will there be monster cards available to purchase for all the new Vason? Uh, we use them all the time in gameplay. Of course, the first Kickstarter had uh, Vason cards that uh, folks could, could use for a quick reference and to sh show the, uh, show the uh, amazing illustrations by Johan. Uh, Nils, uh, is that uh, something that you've been considering? We've been considering it, yes, but there won't be as it looks right now. And and that's because of uh, uh, production things as well, because uh, to be able to create a full deck, we need to fill it with, with stuff. It needs to be something like 40, 50 cards. And mm -hmm. we just don't really have that kind of content with illustrations for all the cards. Um, right. And we don't need, for example, we don't need new in initiative cards for Mythic Britain. It's the same as the original game. So we thought that was not best use um, or best uh, product for this book. So no, they won't be. Uh, there was a, yeah. Mike C. Yes, yeah. so remind me, I'll, I'll hit the next one, uh, Anna. Uh, any Christmas Yule folklore or traditions that you're fond of? Um, I rather like the Icelandic Yule cat that uh, it's a giant cat that, and they have some weird stuff in Ireland, Iceland. They have, you know, 20 different kinds of monstrous whale, I've discovered. Uh, but um, anyway, I digress. Uh, the, the Yule cat, um, you're supposed to get new clothes for Christmas and you're supposed to wear them with pride, dress in your best for the holidays. Sure. And if the Yule cat sees any children failing to do this, it eats them. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, wow. I okay. Uh, I love it. I love it. Uh, Anna, do you have a, a question from? Uh... Oh, oh, yeah. There was someone in the chat who asked what their favorite kind of creature is. But I would like to tw tweak their question. If that person, I think it was Julian in space, doesn't like. If you were a creature, who would you be? Oh. Yeah. Mm. Because I'm thinking you probably also the f you can do the favorite as well. But if if you guys were creatures. Who would you be? Mm. I think when I asked you one Egg class the illustrator this, he said like a gnome sitting under the floor somewhere <laughs> eating, <laughs> eating porridge. And I like... could probably be a leprechaun. Uh, a good choice. Yeah. You'll have the little pipe. I would like that. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. 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 And the pot of gold. Let's not forget that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always a useful so thing publish, to have. Yeah. yeah. Publish role playing games oh, again and again and again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, I think I'd, I would uh, probably be a puka. 
Um, just because I could take any shape I wanted, I could be completely invisible, I could drive people absolutely crazy, it would be enormous fun. <laughs> <laughs> Super uh, cool. Let's see here. Mike C also asks, uh, with your comment about having to leave things out of this uh, out for the size of uh, of this new, of this book, uh, could there be another book to follow up this mythic uh, Britain and, and Ireland? Uh, I guess that's I mean, probably my question for for Nils more than any anybody else. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's make the, that call. Uh, if there will be a mythic in Britain book two, no, probably not. But uh, will it be? Could there be expanded content for for this? Yes, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a matter of finding the form. I mean, we have the Felix workshop. We we might right. do other books as well, but mm -hmm. we won't do another book. Uh, most likely, you, know, you should never say never. But I don't think we, we usually don't do you know the same book again. Mm. Um, but there will, I mean, new content. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's it. Uh, definitely, I plan uh, new content, and uh, we'll have to to see in what form it comes out. Uh, Jonathan uh, asks, uh, "What's your favorite thing that makes Britain and Ireland stand out as a unique setting in Vesson?" The variety, I think. Uh, I mean, we're dealing with uh, four nations, each of them very, very distinct uh, culturally, historically, linguistically, and that's reflected in the differences between their, their respective folklores. Um, and uh, there's just, uh, I've never found any other nation or, or geographical area with such a wide variety of vessen of supernatural fey creatures um and uh that's the the possibilities i i can't see them ever running out uh in in the in those islands uh so i think that makes it unique i, I may be wrong you know someone may come up and say well uh what about the japanese yokai there are hundreds of thousands of varieties of them uh, or somewhere completely unexpected. Someone might come up and say, well, in Austria, we have all these things that no one's ever heard of because it's never been put online. But for now, I, the thing that, um, you know, other than nationalistic pride, I guess, uh, the thing that uh, makes the British folklore special to me is its, its variety and the number of different uh, cultural traditions that, uh, that are embodied in it. The advanced age uh, role playing gamers uh, asks: When taking creatures creatures from mythology, how do you decide what aspects of the myth myths to exclude from the in game version of the creature? That's a very good question. Mm. Um, generally, with with uh, well, I'll make the distinction between myth and folklore. Um, mythological creatures tend to be very powerful. Uh, often too powerful to uh, to be usable in a game unless you're playing uh, you know a, a real high powered hack and slash kind of thing um, so they need to be um, not to, not powered down but uh, due attention needs to be paid to uh, to how to find ways to deal with them um, if not kill them, then uh, banish them or distract them, send them somewhere else. Um, and with folklore, uh, it's less of a problem, the power, but um, there tend to be every tale told about a certain creature tends to represent a totally different creature. And, and you can end up with a, a list of abilities if you take all of the, uh, the available stories about a certain creature creature um, you can end up with a list of abilities that can run for several pages which is obviously quite unmanageable so what i try to do uh, and this is just my approach to it there are probably others just as valid but what i try to do is to look at what the core essence of the creature is and which abilities represent that get them down and then sometimes I'll do a little text box on variants and optional powers. And, uh, you know, I try to represent the, um, the information as best I can while still making it manageable and, uh, and presenting options. 
Excellent. You also talked before about you and Johan choosing different creatures which yes. to be in. And that, of course, must have been like choosing between your favorite children in a way. But how, how, how did you do it? Like, <laughs> Well, we, we just talked. I, I sent him a list and he said, uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, sometimes he already had something in progress for a creature mm -hmm. that would work. Um, and uh, sometimes he... One great example is a, a Scottish creature called, a, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, sorry Scottish viewers, uh, a Fachan, I think it is, um, and that's a, a humanoid with one leg, one eye, one arm from the middle of its chest, you know, just one of everything. Um, oh my word. Uh, but not a half person, but a, a symmetrical, you know, unipod. And um, uh, Johan tried to sketch this and he said, I just can't do this without it looking goofy. Let's do something else. <laughs> so, so that one didn't make it in the book for all that it's, it, it, it's a creature I like. It's one of the first Scottish creatures I ever read deeply about. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Because uh, maybe, yeah. And did you also try to have like a big, some big, some small, some sneaky, some... Oh yes, definitely. Yes, I mean we have um, we have some um, hags. Britain, uh, uh, Doug, I think it was who commented earlier, the guy who had demanded my presence on this show. Uh, Bill, yeah, Bill. Bill, Bill. Yeah. Sorry, Bill. Uh, he mentioned we had a, a chat on Discord about a, a creature called uh, Black Anis, who's a, a kind of a hag, and Britain has a plethora of different kinds of hags. Um, each very distinct from the other, but uh, they're really quite powerful. I, I've posited that they're they're sort of the feminine counterparts of trolls. Uh, in the oh. in in some stories or, or ogres in some stories, um, ogres or yeah hags, their sons are very much like ogres, and their daughters are hags like they themselves are, you know, and their husbands are strong and violent and dim-witted. And whereas they are really smart and, and savage and vicious. And uh, I, I've it's crossed my mind that, you know, ogres and hags might be one uh, species with a high degree of uh, sexual dimorphism. Um, and in folklore terms, ogres are pretty much the archetype of male aggression, whereas hags are the archetype of female aggression. Mm. You know, with their 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 harsh mm. words that become wounding spells and that sort of thing. Um, but anyway, I, that was a huge digression and I apologize, but, um, no, I love it. but, That's good. um, but yeah, we've got some, some, you know, blindly violent monsters. We've got some really tricky monsters. We've got leprechauns who absolutely cannot be trusted. <laughs> and we've got, um, pukas who you never know what, you know, I could, I could pick up this cup of tea and it could squirt water in my face and laugh at me and turn into a puka and run off. Um, you know, so I, we've definitely aimed for a, a good variety, both in terms of gameplay and and uh, in terms of the uh, the the art and uh, to present a, a good variety of images. Excellent. And if you compare it with the Scandinavian creatures, like... Um... As you said before, there are quite a lot of similarities due to like, oh, yes. shared history. But is there is there some creatures like totally off from the Scandinavia? Maybe except the one-legged, one-armed. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, there are. Um, there are quite a few. The, uh, I mean, banshees are pretty famous. The screaming ghosts. They're, you know, very localized, uh, specifically to Scotland. Um, and then there was this horrific creature. This this was when when Johan and I were talking about the Fahan and and how he he just wasn't comfortable drawing it. We settled upon a creature called a Nukalavi, which comes from the Orkney Islands, and that is a uh, kind of a it's a sort of a demonic centaur like creature uh, with no skin and black blood and yellow flesh, and it looks absolutely horrific, and it's breath ruins the crops and it it's uh, um and i've never seen i mean that's so over the top i've never seen anything so over the top in any world mythology or folklore i've ever encountered 
Wow, and I'm like looking forward to see Joanne's images of this like yellow yeah. black, like what? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, there's a couple questions I, I think I think for for Niels here, and then uh, we're kind of running out of time here just a little bit, and and I'll. I'll I'm gonna say if we didn't if we didn't get to your question, uh, we will we'll try to have everyone back on uh, maybe closer to when the uh, the book is uh, ready for release. So so don't think that we're we're not gonna get to questions later on. We will. Uh, let's see here. Trent asks uh, with the solo mode, which is the, the I think the, the 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 latest in the latest batch of stretch goals that we just announced. Uh, if that's unlocked, would it work as a GMless game with other players? So yeah. <clears throat> I can try and answer that, but sure. it's a, a hypothetical answer because it doesn't exist yet. Uh, but uh, I would uh, wager to say that it could be used that way uh, because by its nature, I mean, it's, it does away with the GM, so you could use the same set of uh, rules and methods with a group. Um, I'm not sure how well it would work, but I think it, would, uh, it should, be, should do okay. That said, I would probably say that it's preferable to to run a mystery with a gm if you can if you have several people uh, because you know the nature of solo rules is you can't really have um the mystery is handled differently you can't really discover a mystery when you're you don't have any secrets to discover when you don't have anyone keeping the secrets so that's that's a dilemma that we're trying to solve we'll try to solve with the solo rules um and we'll see how we do that um, hopefully it should be usable uh, with a group as well. Uh, Bog Bunny asks, uh, the, 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 books are, uh, are, the books use U.S. English spelling, but can you ensure that for the British settings where there are game are, are in-game materials like letters, can you use the British spellings? I, I have taken care to do that in, in writing the in-game materials. I'm, I'm kind of in a privileged position here because... I'm British by birth. I lived the first half of my life in the UK and the second half in the US. So uh, I can I can I can play both sides if you like. And uh, definitely with the in-game documents, which are supposedly of British provenance, they have to have the British spelling and, and other conventions. So I did do that in the manuscript and. As much as I could remember to do so, I, I called it out for the attention of the editor, saying, "You know, this is British. Please don't change it." Yeah, we we have small notes from Graham in all different letters where we should yeah. keep the British spelling. And we've done that. Excellent. 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 Uh, yeah, I think we've mostly got caught up on on all the uh, the questions that are in the chat at this point. Uh, if, like I said, if we didn't get to your question, I apologize. But we will have we'll try to have everybody back on uh, at some point to uh, answer more questions once the 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 book is is uh, available for release. Uh, I'm gonna let uh, Nils. Is there something that you would like? Would you like to uh, say anything to the backers, to the the the, commu the freely community before before we sign off uh, here? I mean, uh, I mean, the natural thing is to say it's just a huge thank you for yeah. for supporting this game and actually uh, making the the community around Vassen, I would say, is one of the most. I mean, I love that community because it's creative and it's very inclu inclusive. Um, there's a great Facebook group where people just share materials and so on. And to see that the game kind of uh, expands and finds a new audience and also finds an audience which is kind of not maybe the archetypical RPG player always. It's kind of finds uh, new people. We have a lot of um, emails from people that haven't played RPGs before. They want to try this. So, I mean, uh, I think it's fantastic. And uh, from Free League, I would just say thank you. And uh, I hope you like the book. The books, yes. actually. And, and let me echo that. Thank you so much for your support and enthusiasm, and I really hope you like it. I think there there are and there's so many folks that have already uh, in the chat that are saying thank you for for uh, for doing the stream. Thank you everyone for joining us and and giving your time this afternoon to uh, be a part of this or evening or wh wherever you're at in the world. Thank you so much for uh, for for joining us and giving giving this time. And uh, if you are uh, excited for Basin and, and this new expansion, please please hit that like button down below. That helps uh, you know get this uh, stream noticed after the fact. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the in the uh, in the comments, and and we'll try to answer them as as best we can. Uh, the best thing is though, just to go check out the uh, the Kickstarter, and there's a whole bunch of comments and, and discussion going on in that Kickstarter as well. So maybe your, some of your questions will be answered there. 
Graham, Niels, Anna, thank you so much for uh, for being a part of this. Uh, thank you for having me. Absolutely. We'll, we'll have to do this again uh, very, very, very soon. So maybe, maybe we can have Johan uh, join us uh, for the next one. I'd yeah. love that. That would yeah, be, be good. Yeah. So, all right, folks, that's going to do it for this session. Thank you so much for joining us. May your dice rolls never be, never have to be pushed. We'll see you next time. Bye now.